Hey there, welcome to Synth Seeker. My name's Luke. Today we're going to be talking about how to pull a melody out of your Berlin School patterns, okay? Uh, I was talking to a peer, a friend of mine who is building his own sort of music. Uh, it's kind of in the Berlin School style, a little synth wave action, but he's got a lot of layers and a lot of arpeggiation going on. A lot of patterns are running on top of each other, and it sounds great, but um, one of the pieces of feedback I gave him was, uh, was, Hey, it would be great if there was a voice here, like a melody of some kind. Um, and it occurred to me that, uh, I use a technique often in Berlin school for pulling melodies out of my repeating figures that is both kind of simple and fun. Uh, and so I thought I'd do a demonstration of how that works. Um, so what we have here is a little four part, uh, piece. We've got a bass, uh, bass part here. Uh, we're in the key of A minor. Okay, so I've got this bass line doing their bits. You'll hear all this in a minute. I've got a very simple pad laying across it, but I have two arpeggiation big little uh, little figures running. Okay, these are little Berlin School uh, dotted eighth delay eighth note patterns. Okay, the ducka ducka stuff. Okay, and I've got two of them. They're slightly different. They're laying on top of each other, and the whole thing sounds like this. Hear those? Let me do this. I'll just mute these. So we've got one and the other, all right? And so those two patterns on top of each other, the forms of bed, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use ARP two. We're going to use this pluck sound, and we're going to use that one for the melody for one reason: because when you play with different velocities, the sound changes. So this pluck, when I play harder, it's sharper, right? It can be ex uh, accented, right? Okay, so if you bang on some of these, no, uh, on this instrument when you're playing, uh, it sounds distinctly different. And what, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this pattern and we're going to take all of the notes and we're going to drop their velocities down. Okay. All right. So those blocks are still there, but they're muted. Right. And then what you do in this sort of technique for pulling a melody and lifting a melody out of your patterns, you're just going to arbitrarily pick a few of these notes. I'm going to say, we're going to choose three. Okay. We're going to pick this one. We're going to pick this one and this one, and we'll do four. We'll pick this one. And we're going to bring their velocities back up. And now you'll hear a melody start to come out of this, or at least some accented notes. Okay. And if you don't like one, all right, so uh, this one, maybe not. Let's bring that one back down. Let's do this one. It's the same note as the initial note. Right? And they're syncopated. They're not on the downbeat. They're next to it. Maybe that would be better. So let's take these two notes. Let's bring their velocities back down. And let's take this one that's on the downbeat and this one that's on the downbeat. Or on the beat, I should say. Not just the downbeat. That's better. I want this note to kind of resolve though. So let's raise this one up too, right? Because this note, right? In the key of A minor, this interval of A to F, right? Has a little bit of tension, but this A to E, to this one, right? That is really consonant. There's no tension there at all. So if we're going to play this one as part of our melody, it'd be good to resolve down to sort of release that tension in our melody. So let's listen to it. That's not bad. Although I don't like them being right next to each other. So let's either move this one over 
and see how that sounds. Give them a little space. Not bad. Might be better to move that tens tense note over instead. Mm, not bad. I want even more space between them. Let's move this resolution over a bit. So we'll hold that tension just a tiny bit longer and then we'll resolve. Let's see how that sounds. I like that. I'm going to keep it that way. Now we've got this F playing on top of this A here. I'm going to move that A over like that. You can't hear it, but it's implied. I'm going to bring the velocity up just a little bit. All right, I like that. So this isn't a melody necessarily. This is some accented notes in our pattern. We brought all of the velocities down, and then we're just selectively bringing some up, and we're tweaking some notes a little bit to get something that we find pleasing. But this is still a very small figure, all right? So once we've done this, we're going to duplicate this entire thing. We're just going to double it. Boom. All right? Now that we've got this, we have this initial beginning of a melody, and here I'm going to change it. I'm going to make it different here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the things that we had highlighted, and I'm going to bring them down, and I'm going to take everything that wasn't highlighted before, I'm going to bring it up. So now we have this first sort of beginning of a melody, and now we have these other pieces. I'm going to bring these down a lot more, actually. There we go. Let's hear what it sounds like. Not bad. Not bad. Um, I think we're playing uh, we're playing it real safe. So when you're in the, we're in the key of A minor, and we have a lot of these notes are on A, the root note, and that's fine. But this back half, the melody doesn't seem to really move me emotionally, right? It's because we're we're really hovering on A a lot, and we're hovering on E a lot. A and E is the root and the fifth. Those are very very safe places to be. Okay, so let's make this a little more dangerous. All right, we're going to take some of these A's, and we're going to move them up. Uh, here's a hint too. You want to stay in the key of A minor, all right? So which notes are in A minor? Well, A minor starts with the root note A on the keyboard, and it's all of the white notes starting with A. All right? Now I'm just going to use a convenience here in Ableton. I'm going to say we're going to be in A minor, and I'm going to say scale mode. So now all of these notes are only in A minor. So we're going to take this A, we're going to move it up. A and E are real safe. Let's take a G. And then, well, let's hear how that sounds. Now let's move this one too. Well, we, we want to have some grounding in the root. We'll move this one. Yeah, we'll move both of those A's to G and see how it sounds. Bad. I want this one to stand out more, so we'll bring its velocity up. Not bad. We've got a little gap here. These notes are real quiet, so let's, let's bring them up just a little bit. All right. I think these ones can come back down not too far. And we're going to bring this. I like this. I like the way that sounds. And we're going to give it a little bit more space, but let's hear it. So I like this walks down. And I like this walks back up. But they're exactly the same notes. I'm going to bring this one up to A. So we'll resolve. I 
like that, and I want another high note. So I'm going to take this one, maybe this one. We'll make this one quieter. We'll make this one sharper. And we're going to bring it up. See how that sounds. This is a little busy here, so I'm going to take this one. This E is real safe, so I'm going to make it quieter so it doesn't stand out. This B, let's bring it up an octave. So now we're going to be like walking up. So, and then we do it again. Let's duplicate it again. And I'm actually going to leave this all the same, except that this note, I'm going to bring it up to D. I like that. And I may go in and change a few other things. Uh, if anything, I might make this first one a little bit more thin. Like, uh, let's take this one down. And then out here, we'll add one more. We'll bring this one up as well. This note, I'm going to move in time, I'm going to put it on the beat, all right, because this one's off the beat, and this one's going to be on the beat for a little change the expectations of your brain. And that's how you do it, all right? So what did I do? I had this original pattern, this is a little short one bar sort of um, repeating figure. It was part of an arpeggiation, okay? And I took it, I brought all the velocities of the notes down. I'm using a sound where velocity matters. The harder you hit the note, the more sharp or more loud it sounds. But I brought them all down. Then I picked three or four out of there. Just notes, they're all in key. And so I just picked four that um, were basically at random. You can experiment with random, but, or if you have a feeling that you pick, know which particular notes you've got a rhythmic pattern you want to use, you just pick a few of the notes in there and you bring their velocities back up and you listen to it. And you listen to it in context of your overall pattern. It's like, does this sound pleasing? Get it to a point where you're happy with it. It's not a full melody, but it's the beginning. Then you duplicate that thing. So it, now it's two bars long. And in the second bar, you add more variation. You can move notes around, you can move them in pitch, or you can move them in time. And you start building and experimenting with building a melody off of the pattern that's playing, okay? Then when you're happy with that two-bar pattern, duplicate it again for a four-bar pattern and go and tweak that as much or as little as you like. And what you'll end up with is a four-bar or an eight-bar or maybe even a 16-bar melody line. Now what you can do is you can leave this here or you can just take this whole clip, go put it on its own instrument, and get rid of all the notes that are quiet, and just keep the ones that you've highlighted, right? You can literally go through and just select all of this and turn off all those notes, and then take all of the notes that are still there, right? And click, you know, if you're working in Ableton, you click Legato, but you can just go make them into uh, uh, notes that aren't just little plucks that actually sustain. You give it a lead voice and run with it, right? Uh, that's one way to do it. So anyway, so in a nutshell, that is how you can take a repeating figure, take your Berlin School patterns, pick one of the patterns that has an instrument that responds to velocity, then go in, bring all the velocities down, select a few, Bring a few selected notes up, then duplicate, play with the new, uh, the new bar, 
duplicate those two bars, play with the third and fourth bars, rinse and repeat. So in closing, uh, this is one technique for raising a melody out of your Berlin School patterns. It's not the only way. There's lots of ways to do it. But this is a way that um, I find fun, and it's relatively easy to explain to people, uh, and it's easy for you guys to try out. So give it a shot. See if you can make some melodies that you're happy with. All right? Uh, so thanks for spending some time with me. I hope you have a great weekend. And uh, as always, you've been watching Synth Seeker. Talk to you later.